So hey, it's Sierra, Rhythm and Soul Membership Manager out of the Atlanta office. And today I'm joined by the beautifully talented Dana Madison. Hey. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Welcome to On The Come Up. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> no, we, we've been watching. We've heard so many great things about you. And mm -hmm. one of my colleagues was like, hey, like Dana Madison, she'd be great for the next one. So shout out to Malika, And we got you on. <laughs> oh, I love Malika. Thank you, Malika. Thank y'all for having me on. I'm so excited. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're glad to have you here, and I'm super, super excited to be able to share some information with your ASCAP family. So let's get right on into it. Let's get to it. All right, publishing. Pub, pub, pub is so important. It's so important to the career of an artist, especially starting out, making waves, and creating financial stability. So you're dominating these sync placements, girl. <laughs> So let's talk about your first sync placement that you can remember. And what was that feeling like for you? Do you feel like it's beneficial for artists? How'd that go? You know, I, the one that I really remember that's like, that kind of was like, oh, shoot, I'm doing this was when I had to place my song on Bel Air. And I think when I realized it, I was like, oh my gosh, my music, I've only been making music for so long. And I feel like I just never could have done that. Um, but seeing it on TV, it was kind of, a, it was a very surreal moment. And I feel that um, sync is super important for artists. And I think people overlook it a lot of the time because they just want to, you know, get their music to a hundred stream, hundred million streams on Spotify, but they don't think about like where the money can be made as well. And I think that's super important um, for artists to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, that's super great. Bel Air. Okay. I, I know based on your background, you are a true performer. You are a former NBA Memphis Grizzlies dancer. Therefore, you know, competitiveness and hustle is in your blood. So did you always know you wanted to be a singer? And how did your previous career help you with this transition? It's been a funny journey. I've been a performer my whole life. I always knew I wanted to entertain. So I've been super inspired by entertainers, not just singers. So Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson, Beyonce, all of these incredible people. And I always knew that I wanted to do that, that I wanted to dance and sing on stage. But I didn't start singing until just a few years ago as where I was dancing. It was I've been doing it for 23 years um, and I've been a competitive dancer my whole life. And it really prepared me for the trials and tribulations of the music industry. Like it's it's just as competitive, if not more. Um, but the transition was interesting. Uh, I just, I knew I wanted to sing and I had the perfect team and timing to just get into that. Um, it's funny because competitive dance prepared me to be a perfectionist and also to um, allow myself to grow in spaces that are unfamiliar. So, yeah. No, that, that's really cool. Especially when you say the entertainers, you know, that you are inspired by and you look at because now, you know, you have that same effect. You're able to get out there and dance, sing, and do all these different things. So that's yeah. super, I'm, I'm excited to see what's going to come for you. Me uh, too. It's just a different feeling, like, being on stage, like, with the lights hitting you and, like, being able to affect someone in the audience just by, you know, doing your art, something that you really love to do. So I'm really excited as well. Now, you have a beautiful, light, melodic voice, but it's so powerful. What influences your sound? What influences your overall brand image? I I think I'm a super diverse person. As a Black woman, especially, I'm super diverse. I have a lot of layers and a lot of different avenues that I like to tap into. I'm not sure if anyone knows, but I'm from Orange County, pretty much. And I'm sure you can imagine what it's like being a Black girl in Orange County. <laughs> I was always pretty much the only, the only Black girl uh, in my circles. Um, okay. So I think from that point of view, I am making a lot of house music and that inspired that. Like I grew up with a lot of oots, oots, house vibes. Like I would go to raves and festivals and things like that. And then transitioning into like my more R&B side. I lived in Memphis, Tennessee for a while, which we talked about. And I was dancing for the Memphis Grizzlies. And Memphis has such a huge music history. And that really, really inspired a lot of my R&B music and like those influences. Um, and then me just traveling around the world, I found that I love Afrobeats and love making Afrobeats. So I think that my brand is number one, authenticity and diversity within being oneself. Like you can have, you can be one person with so many different avenues. So I'm 
definitely exploring all of those while staying attached to who I am. Love it. Now, you are an independent artist. So what have you learned about being an independent artist? This shit is hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've learned. It is, it's so difficult trying to do everything by yourself. And even if you're an independent artist, like when you have teams and stuff, you know, like you have to be able to light that fire underneath yourself to be able to soar. It's you get you put in the work and you're going to get what you put in, you know. And if you're not doing the work, it's going to be really hard for you to get to where you want to be. And being an independent artist can be discouraging at times because you feel like you're doing so much or you deserve a little bit more than what you're getting. But you just have to keep going. No one's going to tell you what to do or how to do it. You have to really find what you're doing and how to do it yourself. I love that you talked about your transition and just even how of a dynamic layered artist you are. It's like you're on the come up right now. And, you know, being in the industry is we're in one of those industries where you could be on the come up today and tomorrow you're like taking off. You're in your peak. You're already in your prime. Like you never know what's going to happen. And right. so you have to pretty much stay ready. Um, so how, what do you feel like is going to be your defining moment of success in your career? Is that a certain label deal, a Billboard Hot 100? What does that look like for you? I mean, obviously, I want to be, <laughs> obviously, I want to hit that Billboard Hot 100 for sure. Um, but the way that my personality works, like, even if I hit milestones, I am never satisfied with it. Of course, I'll celebrate and, you know, be in the moment and be present, but I'm always chasing after more. So whether it's that billboard chart charting or getting signed to a label, I'm not sure that there ever will be a defining moment. I think that with everything that I do, the next thing will always be better. And that's just what I'm banking on. No, that's amazing. And I'm sure that's going to keep you encouraged throughout your journey. Being able to continue. I hope so. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm a Capricorn. So like every, I'm just like, I need to do more. It's never enough. Let's just. Keep going, keep going, keep going. So, yeah. Well, you know, we have to talk about your new single. Yes, we do. So, just last month, you released a new single, Light of Fire. And yes. it has caught the industry on fire because you have legendary icon Tony Braxton playing your music, dancing to it. How does that feel? Uh, honestly, incredible. It was such a surreal moment. It was so nerve wracking to like, play my song for her and kind of see how she felt about it. And when I played it, she was vibing to it. She was really loving it. So it's honestly, it's a huge honor to have some, someone so legendary support me and love my music just like I love it. It was incredible. And do you feel like now that you're hitting that point of being that trendy artist and getting the different eyes on you, do you feel like that's going to help or hinder your career now? I It's absolutely going to help my career, honestly. It's going to help with literally everything. The more eyes that people have on me and my music, the better. I mean, everyone starts as undiscovered at some point, you know? It's just the work that you put in and, like, the people that you're around. And it's about who you know and how to work the rooms when you're in them and not in them. And that's what I'm really trying to do right now. Well, it seems like you have that part down pat. Like, <laughs> you got Tony Braxton in the room with you playing your music. So, no, I just... I um I'm dancing with Tony Braxton right now in her residency, her and Septic the Entertainer in Vegas. So when I've been having rehearsals with me and Tony just one on one, I was just trying to muster up the courage to be like, Can you listen to my song, please? <laughs> and she's so cool. It just it just worked out perfectly. And as we got closer, as we're getting closer, I just felt more comfortable to do that. And I'm just so excited that she allowed that space and that, you know, transparency to just dance with me. That's amazing. So let's have a little bit of fun. Have a key what key. are five things you can't go to the studio or get on stage without? Ah, uh, this is a fun one. Okay, I'm not sure if I can even name five things to be honest, because I'm not super like ritualistic and like my performances. I just get up there and do it because I love it. But the studio, this one's easy. I always have my Stanley Cup. I always have to have my water in there and it's annoying. I bring that thing around everywhere, but I need it bad. Um, I do from time to time, like to have a little tequila in the studio. Okay. I do like to have that. Yeah. It doesn't really matter what kind of tequila it is. Just as there's like a little bit of loosening up happening. <laughs> I like to create a vibe in the studio and I feel like a little shot of tequila for everyone in the room just kind of just makes you a little less nervous for sure. 
I don't know if there's anything else that I absolutely need beforehand. I know on stage, I always have a pair of heels because the girls like to walk in heels and have the legs and the booty looking right. <laughs> but I think I only have three. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Nothing okay. super like I need to have that aside from things that I mentioned. But other than that, I'm pretty chill about it. Okay. So is there any advice that you would give to your fellow ASCAP family members about being an artist on the come up? Absolutely. Um, I've been a creative and an artist my whole life, whether it's been dance or, or music, whatever it's been. And there have been so many moments where I've been told no. Most of my career, I've been told no. Um, that's just the reality of what we do. And I think it's so easy to get caught up in, no, 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 I'm not good enough or get into your head about it. I would just say, let all of that go and just be who you are and keep being who you are every day. Show up as you every day. Don't let anyone tell you no, <laughs> really. They're going to tell you no, but like, don't let that discourage you from from reaching your your goals. You know, it's really hard out here and staying encouraged and finding that inspiration and just staying consistent is really what's going to take you far. You need to build resilience as an artist. Okay. Yeah. Well, we definitely appreciate your resilience. We appreciate <laughs> you being part of our ASCAP family. Um, we're we're going to keep our eyes peeled to see what you have coming up next. And we're definitely going to keep streaming your music. So thank, thank you so much for taking time today to interview with us. Thank you for having me. I love ASCAP down. ASCAP <laughs> has been there for me since the beginning of my music career. And I will forever be with ASCAP and I forever have love for y'all. Thank you so much.